if you use NADN and you plan on building workflows and selling them to clients and actually putting these workflows into production, i.e. turning this to active, then you need to be using this error documenting workflow slash error trigger that NADN has inside of it. This node right here called an error trigger is a native node in NADN. And I have it connected to the simple yet effective workflow. And let me show you what it does. All this trigger does when one of my other systems that I have built in NADN errors, it's going to trigger this error trigger and then conduct this workflow. So whenever one of those systems that I just showed you errors, it will trigger this node here. And what's going to happen is this trigger is going to output the workflow name and also the last node or the node that it failed on. Simply all I do next is pass the information through to an LLM. That's basically just tasked and prompted to be an error handler. All it's going to do is take the workflow name, the last node that was executed, and then the error message to then output something like this. It's going to say the error, so what the error was, so a human can understand it, and then the cause of the error, so what caused the error, like the actual technical issue, and then the fix, a recommendation on how to fix the error. But we don't stop there. We want to, one, log this error and also notify our team when there is an error with one of our systems. The reason we want to document the errors that we're having with our systems that are in production is because we want to find trends. If a system is erring in the same spot or on the same node, that way we can find a trend, identify it, and then find a solution. That way we can stop it and get the system working again. For example, we kept having the same error in our photography client workflow, and the error was we couldn't continue because we had an undefined variable. Basically, we were passing through wrong data. And the next step I told you was we want to notify our team immediately whenever an error happens, because let's say this system is important. It needs to be running 24 seven. Well, if this error happens and we don't know that it's erring out, we don't have a way of finding out that it errors unless we go in and check, then our client's not going to be very happy when they find out their system isn't working anymore. The cool part about this system too, is whenever you have it built, you can use this same system for all of your workflows. You don't have to build this for each one of your workflows. Let me show you why. For example, my speed lead system that I showed you in my last video, the way you just connect it to that workflow, you go to settings and then right here where it says air workflow to notify when this one airs. If you can see here, we have air documenting, which is the name of the air documenting workflow. For example, my system I have for my photography client, if I go back into settings, it's also connected to the air documenting workflow. So when any of my workflows fail, I get notified via my air documenting workflow. If you want to learn more about AI automation, how to build the business around it. I did launch my free, yes, totally free school community called the AI Growth Lab. In the classroom, you can find the Builder's Vault where I have full build tutorials and also give you access to the entire template of the build that I built in the video.